I'm Allie Baker, and I just finished the October cover for Nail Pro Magazine. And this is Stephanie Lavery. I'm so excited to be here with the two-time Nail Pro Cup winner, Allie Baker. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you here, and I love the set of nails that you did for us today. Truly love them. How did you come up with this? Well, both of the shapes that I did are both shapes that I have seen a lot online and I've had the chance to kind of practice myself and kind of self-taught myself how to do them. They're both different and they're things you don't see a lot of. And uh, I just, I really wanted to, to do them kind of together and use both shapes. I love this triangle shape. I have not really seen this before. Where did you first come across it? I first saw it on Facebook, Instagram, social media. Um, it was, a, I think, originally done, I'm not exactly positive, by a nail tech out of Croatia, I believe. Um, and Or maybe Serbia. I don't know. Somewhere over there. Um, <laughs> Now that I think about it, it might be Croatia or Serbia. I don't know. Um, anyways, she's she does amazing, like extreme nails, um, super long. Um, has done a lot of different extreme shapes, and uh, her work's really, really amazing. And so I just kind of I look at a lot of the stuff she does, and that other nail techs do too, and try to. You don't always have a chance to meet that person or or learn from them exactly how they do it. So I've kind of just studied them and studied the structure of nails to figure out how to achieve it myself. And uh, so I kind of break it all down and analyze the pictures and then kind of take it from there. So what's your technique for creating this style of nail? Well, I start by folding the form. So I crease it down the center. So I'm making kind of a peak similar to what you would do if you were making a, like a regular edge nail. Uh, then I fold it into a triangle shape. So kind of looks like a pyramid or a long triangle, like a rooftop basically. Uh, and then fit that on there and make sure that my end point is in line with the lower arch and the nail groove so that I know it's going to extend straight out. When it comes to doing interesting shapes of nails, actually when it comes to sculpting any nails, it's really important where the form is placed. But I think specifically for these types of nails, what kind of tips can you offer readers who want to try edge-shaped nails or triangle nails? Ooh, that, that's kind of tough. So f first off, if you know who somebody that does them, ask. I mean, there's... We're all out there. A lot of nail techs are totally willing to help, whether it's a message on Facebook or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's the way I learned a lot of stuff, too, is just asking questions. I think that if you're, you know, you don't necessarily want to ask and you just want to figure it out, like, if you look at the nail from all different angles, you can usually break it down and figure out, okay, does the form need to angle down? Does it need to angle up? And I always look at the side wall of the nail, the nail groove, and the end point of the nail. And that will usually tell me whether that form is going to be angled up towards the edge or if it's going to be angled down. And then I just kind of take it from there. But the more you look at, if you can get the picture of that shape and break it down and really analyze it from different angles, a lot of times you can get that to figure out. So I try to, I've taught quite a few classes on shapes at some smaller networking events, and they've been really popular, and I kind of break it down that way so that they can look at a photo and figure it out themselves. Um, and I sculpt the acrylic on top of that and try to make sure that I press it so it is as flat as possible. So it just helps with filing. I use my brush a lot to press in the shape and make sure it's nice and smooth and as flat as possible. So you get those really nice crisp angles uh, and press the top down and just try to build in as much as I can with my brush to help prevent a lot of extra filing. Uh, then when it's all set up, then I usually go in with an e-file and then I can smooth out any big lumps because getting those shapes sometimes are a little difficult to get everything exactly smooth. So I use the e-file just to take a little bit of stress off the, the file and then hand file all the finish work and make sure everything's nice and crisp and the lines are all nice and straight. You sculpted these nails with a custom blended colored acrylic. Any tips for blending those colors together? I start off with, uh, well, I used a, like a chocolate brown and a kind of a maroonish burgundy. I wanted something a little more on the brown side. So I started off with brown and just added a little bit of red because that was the stronger color until I got the color I wanted. So I start, I don't try to just do half and half all the time. I always start with one and add little amounts of the stronger color till I get the color I want. Um, and it just kind of came together that way. I thought it was a great combination and it really went well with her skin tone.
My other favorite part of these nails was the embossed design. How did you do that? Well, once the nail was filed and I knew that all my lines were good and crisp, I have a foil gel that I use. It goes on like a gel polish. So I just used that and polished over the section that I wanted to emboss, uh, cured that. And then I went back in with the same gel and a striping brush and did the design, cured it. And then I went over it with a chrome pigment powder. What is a foil gel? Well, this is, it's a gel that just is, has a little bit less of a tacky layer. So it's not as slick, uh, cured that. Then when I did the embossed part with the striping brush and cured that it has, still has a tacky layer, but it's not gooey really, I guess would be the right word. So it takes the, the chrome goes over it and leaves a really nice finish. And then how did you finish it off? Then I used a no cleanse top coat over the entire nail to bring it all to a high shine. So tell me about how you applied the embellishments and any tips for doing them in the salon so they don't fall off. Well, I haven't found anything that's totally foolproof. Uh, I've tried it with gel. I've tried different top coats. Um, the thing that I like, I guess, maybe best is resin because a lot of times with the if you try to use a gel, it doesn't always cure underneath the embellishment. If it's really small gel's great. Um, but if it's a larger embellishment it's sometimes the gel isn't cured underneath and they pop off really easily. So for a majority of the pieces on this, I used a resin. Um, and I just make sure that after I stick the piece on that there's enough resin around it to kind of seal the edges of that embellishment and kind of hold it in place a little better. So it's not just sitting on top of a thin coat of resin. Well, thank you so much for coming in and doing another fabulous set of nails. I'm so excited about these. And I know you got up super early, so thank you for putting your all into it. <laughs> no problem. I always like coming. I have a great time when I'm here, so I can't wait to see the final result.